That's because I've heard that if deliberate cold exposure is done too soon after a hypertrophy adaptation inducing workout, yeah. right? All the sorts of things we've been talking about that the hypertrophy response can be blunted, reduced, or eliminated. Is that true? And if so, when could people do deliberate cold exposure while still also including hypertrophy training in their program and still get hypertrophy? Great. So you know I'm a lover of the cold. I, I still have a deep freezer uh, in my house that is filled with water at all times that is plugged in and, and is a frozen chamber. I, I still do the old school style of it. Please unplug it before you get in it each oh, time. Oh, yes. Absolutely. And then don't do it by yourself so that the lid can close on top of you and then we don't see you sort of ever again. Han, uh, the Han Solo effect. It's time for me to upgrade and get one of these new fancy ones, but <laughs> I've been using this for so many years. So I love it. Um, obviously, I've been involved with XPT and, and Gabby and Laird and, and Brian McKenzie and these folks. So I've been doing this stuff for a long time. I've put, I don't even know how many hundreds of folks into the ice and done a lot of reasons. So there are a lot of benefits and we could talk about those later. However, that, that being said, it is very, very true. You do not want to get in the ice post hypertrophy training. You wouldn't want to do that immediately after the workout. You probably don't want to do it before the workout and you probably don't even want to do it that same day. Um, it, it's just not worth it. It will blunt hypertrophy. And specifically, we've talked earlier about what's driving muscle growth is that signaling cascade uh, through that gene expression, through that muscle protein synthesis. Cold exposure blocks that signal. Remember, adaptation comes from stress. You've put in a stressor in, now you've blocked that stress. You've literally blocked the signal that tells your body come back and grow larger size. So not a good idea to do it. If you're training for some other purposes, maybe strength, maybe there's an argument there, although maybe not. Um, for speed and power, maybe you can get away with it. Endurance, maybe a separate conversation. If you're in season, I have no problem using it immediately after a game. The goal is entirely different. Even if we did a hypertrophy type of training program, we're not doing it to try to, ma to, try to maximize growth. In that particular case, our priority for recovery is higher than our priority for muscle growth. So we choose optimization in that category. You can only make those choices though when you truly understand what is the goal for the day, the week, the month, the phase of training, and really what part of the year you're in. We have that all plotted out for, for all the people we work with. So I know when we want to choose one over the other. It's not a, this is the choice you always make, the situation. That's just not how we operate. We need more precision than that. So that being said, we're generally not going to do it. Uh, if we want to do a lot of icing during a phase in which we're um, using a lot of hypertrophy, we're going to do a couple of things. Number one, we may just not use it. So there are phases in our training where I don't want to maximize recovery. I'm not going to give you any tricks here. I'm not going to do ice or any of the other methods we're going to talk about. Why? Because the whole point is to cause overload. That's what's going to be the stimuli to cause adaptation. If all I'm doing is blocking that stuff, attenuating it, smashing it back down, I'm undercutting myself. I'm choosing to feel a little bit better, to have a little bit better performance right now, knowing that's going to compromise the results. I'm going to get six, eight, 10, 12 weeks from now, right? So I'm not going to choose it at all. And the reality of it is, if I really am trying to maximize hypertrophy, I'm probably not doing any ice work during that whole phase. Maybe like my off day. I know that's similar to a, a setup you have, like one day a week when I'm not training, we'll jump in some ice, maybe even do some hot, cold contrast. Um, I, I love the XPT protocol. It's, it's, you know, you've probably talked about it before. That's a great setup um, or, or just not do it at all. Right. It's just not something we need. When we new, move into another phase of training where we're trying to maximize adaptation or maximize the result and, and get the benefit of that training, now we're going to hedge more towards recovery and we're going to bring in some of these strategies and techniques and not worry about causing the most stimuli there because we're trying to attenuate or because we're trying to actualize the work we did six, eight, 10, 12 weeks before. What about cold showers? Do those have the same hypertrophy blunting effect? In as general, no. In general, you can do cold showers. That's not going to be a problem. You're not going to be in there very long and you're not going to get nearly as cold um, as you will submerge in 30 degree ice water for like that, the way that we do it nonetheless. So um, I have no problem standing in the shower for a couple of minutes um, using it for other reasons. If, if you want to, that's no issue. 